you hear a little verbal joust between Brandon Bean and reporter yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I heard it. Uh, Brandon Bean had to, uh, you know, face the music of trading Stephon Diggs, their number one wide receiver, to the Houston Texans in the AFC South mm. for a second round pick in next year's draft while also giving up a fifth and a sixth. He addressed local media yesterday and uh, they talked about the future and talked about the draft. And hey, if you're getting rid of all your wide receivers, what's going on with the draft? Here's what Brandon Bean had to say. And possibly draft multiple receivers this year. Well, did you hear me on Pat McAfee? I said we're going to draft one in every round. You didn't hear that? You don't like Pat? I, I like Pat, but he's a pretty good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate I, I appreciate oh, him yeah. saying, you, you don't like? You didn't see? You don't like Pat? Oh. I appreciate that because he's probably heard about some of the wars that we've potentially been in, just mm-hmm. trying to pick and choose who's on Pat's side, who's not. We appreciate that, Mr. Brandon Bean. <laughs> and we have reached out to Brandon Bean a couple times since mm-hmm. the trade has taken place, especially to the Houston Texans and the AFC South, and let him know that we're not necessarily thrilled, but we understand he's got to do what he's got to do. We have not heard back. But here is Brandon Bean on our show addressing the wide receiver in the draft situation to a question from Tone Diggs. Yeah, Yeah, I'm not sure if you know this or not, but you guys are taking wide receiver in the first round is what I'm being told and and everyone. Hey, congratulations for doing that. Good class for it. Just just the first round? Got 11 picks. Uh, We got got screwed on your compensatory pick. News for you. Luckily for you, this is a deep wide receiver draft. Okay, so I want to ask you kind of about the way you go about drafting. When When it's a deep, say, wide receiver or tackle draft that everyone's saying it is or whatever, are you more likely to go a different position if you don't love someone where you're picking at since there is so much death and maybe you could take a flyer on someone in the later rounds? Is that, or do you just always have a guy or or just go by your board? How's it work generally for you in that situation? Yeah, great question. Uh, first off, we're taking a receiver oh, every, round, every round. Hey, good question, Tony. Hey, but but uh, in all seriousness, it, using receiver, it is a deep class this year. So if you were okay. on the clock, let's just say first round, and what you, number pick are you? Uh, Twenty-eight. So if you Jeez, you got your board sucks. stacked. All right. So he did give <laughs> yep. some real answers in there, which is kind of our show. You know, we call it um, comedic informative. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. there was a lot of you had to get through some bullshit in there. Sure. Okay. With you know, Tone saying, "Well, all the mocks are saying this yeah. about you." He takes a shot at there, but then you hear him say, "This is a deep mm-hmm. wide receiver uh, draft class, though," which I think is him acknowledging that, hey, we've been doing a lot of research on the wide receivers, knowing when you lose Gabe Davis, now you trade away Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen's going to need a weapon somewhere. Oh, yeah. So I did think we got a little bit from him there. Now him saying I'm drafting a wide receiver on every single uh, round, that's probably bullshit. Yeah, mm-hmm. Probably. For sure. But that's our program on a day-to-day basis. We did some journalism there. Feels like he likes what's coming out of the college. Yeah, definitely. And, and to be honest, listening to that back, I, I think they're going to trade up to like eight now. Whoa. And, and, t- and take a wide receiver just because, you know. they. That was me that said, geez, that sucks. Uh, yeah. Exactly. That it, wasn't Brandon B. No, no, no. Oh, it okay, wasn't. Okay, no, okay. it wasn't. But okay. he, he does go on to say, because he talks about last year, how like, hey, when, when it gets close and you really like a guy like they did with Kincaid and you only have to go up two or three spots, sure. Like, that, be, being will do that. And this situation now and that they moved up for Kincaid after paying Dawson Knox 50 million dollars mm-hmm. like now they they lose their top two receivers it feels like hey if Bean likes the guy at you know 15 or even 20 like would he move up eight spots I feel like he has proven that he would and he actually said that he would I love the fact that Bean has been uh seemingly so transparent about everything mm-hmm. he said him well this isn't a rebuild like this is something we had to do. Now, they had to get under salary cap. Yeah. Yep. They had to move a lot of contracts. They had to move. This is a part, though, of being a wagon that has paid your quarterback. Like, things are going to have to happen around the quarterback that you're going to have to make. Decisions are going to have to mm-hmm. be made that you're not necessarily going to love. Stephon Diggs is obviously a massive loss to that offense, especially if you look at the amount of yards. Now, Brandon Bean did point out, I don't know if Stephon, was he ever an all-pro before? I don't think he was. Here's Brandon Bean talking about Stephon Diggs. I mean, I don't remember. Did, I don't think Steph made an All Pro before he got here, um, and he made multiple and some Pro Bowls in there too. So Brandon Bean has heard the whole conversation about Josh Allen hadn't been shit until Stephon Diggs showed up, but he's also potentially thinking like, "Hey, it was good for both sides here through this all," which leads even more to the point of that's a difficult decision to make to move mm-hmm. on. But you have to understand the teams are going to have to change. Like that's just how it's going to have to go. Defensive side's going to look different. Offense side's mm-hmm. going to look different. But if you pay 17, which they did, and you have faith in 17, you just got to assume that the next team is going to be just as good, hopefully better than the previous one. Well, and you mentioned it yesterday, talking about Brady and Manning and Rodgers and guys like that. Like those types of quarterbacks. 
create stars. You know, like you can go out and pay a guy top dollar if he's already established as one of the best guys in in the league. But the way they've paid Josh Allen and we've watched him, how good he is, they obviously believe he's one of those guys where if they draft a couple receivers this year and they sign Curtis Samuel, I think too, like mm-hmm. yep. they believe that he can he can create a star. Like they don't need to be paying a guy top dollar in order for them to get production at receiver. Well, so to that point, Tom Brady, uh, there's actually a video released from the golf <laughs> tournament in which they played. Aaron still has his very long hair. And <laughs> awesome, looks like incredible hippie where Tom Brady talks about quarterbacks losing wide receivers and even predicts what's happening right now in Buffalo. Devontae left him and Tyreek left you, Patrick. Josh, don't worry, someone's going to leave you too. I love you. My boy Mike never left me, I'll tell you. Devontae yeah, they're talking left. about losing yeah. your weapon mm-hmm. and he said, Josh, don't worry, someone's going to leave you. Stephon Diggs now gone. He did. These are decisions that get made business-wise. Tyreek, remember, mm-hmm. trade, uh, pay by yep. Miami Dolphins because yep. of money. So if you're a great quarterback, there's a good chance you're going to mm-hmm have a great wide receiver, and with the new market of what wide receivers are and can get, especially if they're great, it's going to be hard to keep tag team partners together. Yeah. Now, Chase and Joe Burrow seemingly going to be able to remain together going forward. T. Higgins, though, probably not no. going to be able to happen. And Jamar Chase, probably this next contract, yeah. would they're going to pay the quarterback probably. Yeah. So he's probably going to have to go elsewhere. This is going to become a trend, I think, which is not cool. I don't love it. But I think this is going to become a common trend as the business continues to go where it's headed for these wide receivers. Well, and think about the team that keeps beating them in the playoffs, the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, I now, do does everyone think Josh Allen is as good as Mahomes? Probably not. But I think the Bills think pro- Josh Allen is as good as Mahomes. They paid him like he is. And they saw what Mahomes has done with these re- wide receivers since Tyreek has left, and, and they're probably thinking in their head, why can't we do the same with Josh? Is It's probably what they're thinking. Yeah, you know, and Dalton Kincaid, maybe he gets going a little bit. Exactly. Like yeah. he, he could be their guy. and who like They might start leaning on James Cook. Cause they get, Shakir was a dog. Co- yeah. yeah, Shakir was they a dog, too. They ran a ton but, after. Yeah, once they fired mm-hmm. uh, Dorsey, yeah. they started really running the ball. And that's oh, yeah, kinda, let James, James. Cook. Cook, and that's kind of what you know. Not the Chiefs completely lean on Pacheco like that, but they use mm-hmm. Pache- they give Pacheco twenty carries pretty consistently. Like if they start doing that with James Cook, they might not need that top end guy.